Well, it's fair to say things didn't go to plan. In yesterday's episode, we lost to Uzgaburga in the relegation zone by a scoreline of 4 1. And it happened again against 1860 Munich. So we've done some tactic tweaking again. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 37 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does If Emma hope you are doing well and come up today. We take on Werder Bremen and Nuremberg either side of getting this year's youth intake. Hopefully we can get ourselves up the table just a little bit as we are starting to lose a bit of ground on those teams in the promotion hunt. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, you know what to do. Consider going down below, hitting that thumbs up button. And also, if you're new around here and haven't done so already, also consider hitting that subscribe button as well. It is greatly appreciated. But in today's episode, things didn't go as well as I was hoping they would off the back of going to an attacking mentality going in to the restart off the back of the winter break. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Two wins going into that episode yesterday. Then we got beaten quite heavily away at Erzgebirge before a nil all draw at home against Paderborn. Off the back of that gave one last chance for the 4 2 3 1 with that attacking mindset and unfortunately suffered another defeat. This one a little bit closer, 3 2 away from home, grabbed the lead just after half time through an own goal, but then they grabbed an equalizer straight back and grabbed a winner with 25 minutes left. So that was two losses on an attacking mentality, two teams down in the relegation zone. So it did feel like that 4 2 3 1 wasn't really working off the back of that, actually went back to the 4 3 3 that we started the season with, because in terms of stats and games, we weren't looking that bad, just the results that weren't coming from them. If we go back to the start of the season, the results not that good, but the performances weren't actually that bad. Unfortunately, that just continued to draw at home against Karlsruhe, not too bad, but then a 3 0 loss away. At Armenia Bielefeld, so it's fair to say I think the 4 3 3 here at Lokomotiv Leipzig won't be getting used for a fair while, even though it is the tactic that should suit our group of players the best. And off the back of that, we did change to a 4 2 3 1 control position style, which is pretty similar to what we were using before with the fluid counter attack anyway, just a few minor role changes there with Leon Heinke as a halfback, and also just the odd instruction there on the left hand side. Also being changed, but for the most part, not too much of a departure from that fluid counter-attacking style that we started to find some form with off the back of those results with the 4-3-3 at the start of the season. And thankfully coming in to today's episode, we have just found our form a little bit. Yet again, came back late in this one away at Magdeburg to pick up a 2-1 win. And yet again, at home against Darmstadt, we grabbed a very early goal. Unfortunately, they equalized. Late in the first half, but Jamal Ziani, deep in injury time, didn't give us a winner. So it does feel like our form might be on the improve with those results and that control position kind of style kind of mixed with the fluid counter attack with that 4 2 3 1, which these days does seem to be the optimal formation here at Locomotive Leipzig. And it does mean we aren't in as bad a position as you might expect on the league table, still in sixth, but these days seven points behind St. Pauli as well. As Jan Regensburg, those teams tied in second and third spot, and hopefully we can make up some more ground on them in today's episode, albeit it won't be easy. One team we play is above us in Nuremberg, and also we take on Werder Bremen, who did beat us earlier in the season, handed us our first defeat with that 4-2-3-1 fluid counter-attacking style. So hopefully we can get some revenge on those guys off the back of a couple of wins in our last few games. Of course, we also have the youth intake coming up in today's episode, so it does mean we can preview that second game off the back of seeing what this year's youngsters do look coming into the club here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. But first up, we do take on Werder Bremen. Earlier in the season, we played these guys. They were up around third at the time. They've really slipped down the table into 11th. And as you can see, only one win from their last five games, albeit quite a few draws as well. So it would be fair to say form for both teams coming into this one is pretty average. They were predicted to be finishing in second though, so certainly performing well below the media expectations this season. Hopefully we can get some revenge for that earlier defeat. We'll go back up and show it to you guys. It was off the back 
put up a really good run, but unfortunately suffered a 1-0 defeat. That one at home, no doubt, this one being away from home might be tougher, but hopefully having just switched back to the 4 2 3 one, we can find some form yet again and hopefully get some revenge and maybe sneak out of that table just a little bit more to hopefully keep ourselves in somewhat of a promotion race and at the very least start to really make sure there is no chance of getting relegated back down to the free league come the end of this season. And we'll come back shortly and hopefully today continue some form that we have just built up in our last couple of games off camera. It's first up, we travel to take on Werder Bremen. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. There are Werder Bremen also going with a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, they know not to go near a 4-3-3, unlike me. And in terms of us, these days we've put Ziani up front. Just feel like off the back of grabbing that goal off the bench to give us three points in our last game. He deserves a start over Manganelli. But apart from that, we are at full strength and hopefully can make it three wins in a row for the first time in a long while. And just shot the 10 minute mark, the first highlight here is a corner in favor of Werder Bremen. Thankfully, Jan Heinke will head that one away. And it is here, Mohamed Chan, who floats this one far post. 4 11, great save there from Kapakas. And make sure the angle's too tight for him to follow it up on the rebound. Good save there from our goalie to keep it at nil. All in fact, only a few minutes later, another highlight here. Werder Bremen are in possession despite the fact we are trying to play a control position style. Even though we've won those last two games, haven't really played that well based on stats. So hopefully that changes today. But it's a shocking pass there from Panzer Ernesto. And Dutch will put that one away. And we gift them a 1-0 lead here in front of their home fans. Ernesto tracked back nicely to deal with this. But undercooked that pass there to Leon Heinke. And from there, it's a simple square ball. Dutch actually does quite well to squeeze that between goalkeeper and defender, and we go 1-0 down early. And nearly up to half time, we eventually get a highlight in our favour in this first half. It is a corner, albeit Werder Bremen. Do head that one away, and now the goal scorer gets a chance here to do something on the counter-attack, just makes his way straight through one of our players there around the halfway line, and Werder Bremen might actually get one more chance here in this first half so far. We have done very little. Missed header there from Lucas Search, but thankfully Krapakas gets a good hand on that with that precautionary dive. So that is a big save there yet again from our goalkeeper. Yet again, Charm gets in behind and Krapakas. Another big save. He's coming up quite big for us in this first game of today's episode. Of course, in that first one yesterday, he did have a little bit of a shocker. Thankfully, we deal with that danger from the corner initially as well. Just see. If anything else does come from this highlight, it does not. But as you can see, that was a really poor first half. Only two shots, none on targets. Even though we have had more of the ball, we've done absolutely nothing with it. Werder Bremen, 11 shots, six on target, including that big mistake made by Ernesto, which did lead to them scoring the goal. We'll just chuck Mike Wosu here on an inverted wing. We'll just see if that will help. For the second half and also we might play with a higher tempo like we did with our fluid counter-attacking style. But we'll just see if those changes might kick us into life here in the second half because so far very poor performance might be back to the drawing board with this tactic yet again as we'll get the second half underway. 1-0 behind. And coming up to the hour mark, nothing's happened so far in the second half so we're going to switch to an attacking mindset. Also take some players off on poor ratings. There are quite a few Manganelli can come on. For Ziani up front, also Danny Hummel at right wing will bring on Vufark for the first half mistake maker in Ernesto. And also, actually, we know Labonte started this game as Stankovic is out with a suspension. So we'll bring on a Hindu in place of him. There'll be four of our subs used. Still 1-0 behind at the hour mark. Now, only a few minutes off the back of those first couple of substitutions in this game. There is a foreign here, will be yet again. It is in favour of Werder Bremen. Hopefully, we can finally do something in this game. And a Tilgen there does start to get us on the front foot. Now, Danny Hummel makes his way inside the opposition box. Squares that one nicely for Manganelli. But yet again, he takes a shot. It gets blocked by a defender. He just seems to find himself being a bit too slow with his shots. And just having defenders get in the way, unfortunately, can't do much from the subsequent corner. In fact, Levin might even start something on the counter-attack for Werder Bremen. Thankfully, does not. And we are still 1-0 behind. 
And in fact, right off the back of that highlight, Leon Heinke has just picked up a yellow card to make our last substitution. Mark Lamptey can come on for him. And about to enter the last 10 minutes of this game, since going attacking, we have started to do a bit more in this game, but it is time for us now to put more roles onto a more positive duty. Also, up the tempo just a little bit and hopefully find a way to grab an equaliser late at Werder Bremen. And only a couple of minutes off the back of those changes, it's a late corner here to Werder Bremen. Good chance there to Mohamed Chum, but thankfully that one comes off the post and we still are only down by one goal. And now we enter the last few minutes. It might be time for us to just go a bit more direct, go wider and also put a bit more of a press and also distribute quickly in the last couple of minutes and also up our defensive line as well. And we'll see if that can help us grab an equaliser in these last few minutes. And we do get a late highlight in this game with only 30 seconds left. It is a throw in here in our favour. Linus Zimmer looks far post. Mark Lamptey has scored those before, albeit back down in the free league. I believe it was. Unfortunately, that one goes just over the bar, really. The first decent chance we've had in this game, albeit did have one earlier through Manganelli. It did get blocked by a defender to go wide. Zeela took his time over that goal kick. Did not need to take it. And again, as soon as I turn on the camera, we put out a very disappointing performance, a 1-0 loss to Verda Bremen. It was away from home, so I suppose, based on the media predictions for this season, not a terrible result, but still really annoyed at the lack of attacking output in that game. We are still struggling in terms of our goal scoring, albeit these days not the worst team with that, but with the changes that we have made over the last couple of months to our tactic, it does also mean our defence not as solid as it was earlier in the season as well, but it is a loss, so maybe it's time for me to go back to the drawing board yet again. We do have a few weeks before we do play that next game against Nuremberg, but we suffer a 1-0 defeat against Werder Bremen. Hopefully, we get some better news when we come back for this year's youth intake. And we come back about a week off the back of that first game of today's episode and get our new youth intake here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. It's only rated three and a half stars. A good intake, but a few players here with some decent potential who we are going to sign. We're only going to sign the ones really who are the elite and top talents. Don't feel like we need to waste our money on any below that level. So the best talent coming through the club in this year's youth intake is a defensive midfielder in Neil Steppert. He is German. One and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential, can also play a bit further forward on the right wing or at centre back. So quite versatile, but he is the pick of the players who comes through our youth intake this season, albeit is a little bit shorter than I would like for defensive midfielder at 1.72 metres tall, but he is the pick of them according to star rating. And that potential, and we've got four top talents who look decent as well. Cedric Becker with one star current ability and four stars potential in goal could be a good useful player for us for homegrown purposes in a couple of years time. Also an attacking midfielder comes striker in Sinan Ugulu. He could be someone as well that makes his way into the first team in a couple of years time. Probably the best of the top talents is a left back come centre back in Basti and Petrov because he has that four and a half star potential like our elite talent. He looks more though like a centre back I would say because it is his more natural position. Hopefully, we'll do a decent job for us there in a couple of years' time. And lastly, the last player we're probably going to sign from this year's youth intake is a left-come right-winger, and that is Luca Bolognaf. One-star current ability, three-and-a-half stars potential. I would dare say the rest of them won't get signed here to Lokomotiv Leipzig, but that is this year's youth intake. A few players there with some decent potential, and they'll step it and bust the Petrov. And a week off the back of getting our youth and taking offering contracts to those players that we did show you guys. We are about to play our second game of today's episode at home against Nuremberg. Before then, we are getting some job interview offers here at Lokomotiv Leipzig over the last couple of episodes. So far, it's been from a couple of teams in the same division as us, but this time a job offer came in from Belgium and Ghent. If this was a journeyman save, honestly, I'll probably be quite keen to take that one, not Genk. But Ghent's not the biggest team over there in Belgium, but still, that would have been an interesting move. But obviously, fun club save, we're not looking at that. But as you can see, starting to get some interest here for our work at Lokomotiv Leipzig, having got them up to the two Bundesliga. But also going into the second game of today's episode, we did play a friendly against Osnabrück, one of our former rivals from the Free Liga. And I did play around with some tactics in that game and have decided 
We'll just go back to the future for the rest of the season and go to a 4-2-3-1, fluid counter-attacking style, and pretty much what was working before we did head in to that period, just leading into the winter break where I did start to tinker with things potentially a little bit too much because I was a bit frustrated at the fact we were the lowest scoring team in the league, albeit we also had the best defence. So hopefully going back to what we had before all those changes is going to make sure we do just get some better form on the board here for the rest of this season. The only change we have actually made is in terms of our lines of trusting the game here to tell us we should go with a lower defensive line and a mid block instead of what I usually do, which is a standard defensive line and a high press. We'll just drag those back a little bit and hopefully can refine some form here at Locomotive Leipzig. But coming into the second game of today's episode, as you can see, with a lot of players in our defense on yellow cards, that could be an issue off the back of this game. We are going to take on a Nuremberg team. We did only manage a draw against earlier in the season when they did get sent to 10 men quite early in that game, albeit this one is at home and they come into this one also in a pretty average recent patch of form in the one win from their last five games and most recently a loss to Arminia Bielefeld, albeit not by the same margin that those guys pumped us by. They're exactly where they were predicted to be by the media in that four spot. Hopefully a win here can just close the gap on them and those other teams in the promotion hunt, we're probably a little bit far away from that at the moment, but three points in this game should get us right back in that race with only six games left in the season off the back of this one. So we do need to start picking up some points in these games. Otherwise, it's probably looking like a mid-table finish for us here this season at Locomotive Leipzig, which truth be told, still won't be that bad, especially with all the tactic tinkering that I have done and probably, in hindsight, rather needlessly as well with the expectations here, but I just feel like we haven't played that attractively over the last couple of months, so hopefully going back to that fluid counter-attacking style might help us out a little bit. In that regard, and we'll come back shortly and hopefully get the job done at home as we host Nuremberg. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. A few changes were put Manganelli back up front as Ziani didn't really fire when we started him in that previous game, and also Stankovic back from his suspension. He goes in for Labonte at the back. There are Nuremberg. They are going with a 4 3 3. So that is interesting. A formation not many teams use in this division. And obviously, we have struggled with. Hopefully, we can make the most of it and pick up three points here at home. And just show the 10 minute mark first highlight in this game again is a corner to the opposition. They try and put that one far post. Thankfully, we do deal with that danger so far. We've been on top. This first highlight is in favor of Nuremberg. Good chance there, far post. Thankfully, though. That gets safely blazed wide, and it is still nil all, just past the 10 minute mark. And just past the 20 minute mark, we do get our next highlight here. It's a front in Nuremberg, albeit thankfully they give that one away. Good work there from Manganelli to get that ball back for us. They have gone the front foot Nuremberg since we did have that opening highlight, which was in their favour up until that stage. Did feel like we were the better team. Nice ball there from Atilgan for Manganelli. Takes that one round the goalkeeper. Big hand in that goal from our loney striker in Massimo Manganelli. Got the ball back for us. From that throw in, and he gets a lovely ball there from Atilgan, takes it around the goalkeeper nicely, and going back to that fluid counter attacking style, we grab a goal and one of the first highlights in this game, even though it does come about halfway through the first half, and hopefully we can hold on to this lead as we go 1 0 up. And about 10 minutes off the back of us, taking a 1 0 lead, it is here Nuremberg trying to make their way out from the back just inside of their own half. Ethan Ampadu there gets the ball played back to him. A few times they try and play a ball over the top, but Ernesto this time controls it nicely at the back. And now we find a Tilgan here in some space down this left-hand side, starting to find our groove here. It does feel like going back to this fluid counter-attacking style, which actually hasn't been suggested by our assistant manager. You know, I did rejig the tactics here these days, wants us to play direct counter-attack, park the bus, or tiki taka, but I feel like none of those styles really suit us, especially Tiki Taka. So did go back to the fluid counter attack and so far seems to be working in this game. Matilgan back on the ball down this left hand side looks for a Wusu there at the far post. Good header just goes over the bar, but we are still 1-0 up. And only a few minutes off the back of that previous chance yet again a Wusu here is on the ball this time with a free kick headed away, but Queto starts to make his way forward down this left hand side. Can he square it? For Manganelli, unfortunately can't. 
takes a shot, takes a deflection, and the goalkeeper as well might have come up there with quite a big save. So we are going to have a corner here. Hopefully, can grab a cushion goal, albeit Heinke heads that one back out to Wusu, who was offside. But so far, a good first half, and we are still 1 0 up. Yeah. And just as things were going so well in this first half, we are nearly, or we should already be at half time, but unfortunately, playing a bit of extra, and Panzer Ernesto has picked up a serious injury. Eric Vufak will come on for him. That's a bit annoying, having to use one stoppage right before half time. And unfortunately, a bit of a sour note there to go into the sheds. But apart from that, that was a pretty good first half. Obviously, that goal to Manganelli was a boost. And apart from that, most highlights there were in our favour. Apart from that first one, pretty happy as well with how things are going. Obviously, apart from the fact that Ernesto did pick up that late injury, I think the way things are going, we'll leave the instructions as they are and hopefully can hold on to this 1-0 lead during the second half. And seconds into the second half, an early highlight here, it's a free kick in our favour, albeit a bowler heads that one away for Nuremberg and now a chance for them here to do something on the counter-attack. Frolling here plays a ball over the top for some reason. Liner Zimmer does not pick it up. It's put away there by Pichsinovich. We'll just hold off here because hopefully he was offside. Otherwise, that's a shocking mistake there from our captain at left back. Indeed it is, and that is such a bad way to concede an equaliser. Linus Zimmer surely could have reacted to that before that attacker was behind him. But still, if he kept on running, that should have been something he could have dealt with. And on the counter-attack, unfortunately, we suffer an equaliser very early in the second half. And just past the hour mark, I think it's time for us here to make our second substitution. Michael Wusu's had some chances. Isn't going too badly, but on a 6.5, Danny Hummel can come on for him. We'll also adjust some instructions and hopefully can grab a winner in the last half hour. And only a few minutes off the back of that previous substitution at right wing, there is a highlight here staying with a free kick to Nuremberg, who so far have had the better of things in the second half, which is a bit concerning because in that first half, we did look quite good. Now a decent chance here as they do get inside the box. Thankfully, we hit that one away, albeit nice pass there for Ingvartsen. They put that one away very similar to the first goal. They did score again. We are waiting for a VAR check. Hopefully it comes to our aid because so far in the second half, we have certainly fallen apart. And thankfully, that one does get disallowed through VAR. We dealt with that danger from that ball into the mixer, and that is a very close call. Thankfully, goes in our favour, and it is still one all as we're about to end the last 25 minutes, and also a few players are down to red hearts, so we'll bring on Mark Lamptey in place of Leon Heinke, and also Anton Bulland for Osman Atilgen. And also while we're here, we might actually make our last substitution as well, because Daniel Cueto not going that well. We might move Manganelli into that role to play as a bit of a shadow striker, and Ziani can go up from. That's all our subs used, having just held on to the one-all scoreline. And just about to enter the last 10 minutes of this game, there is a free kick here to Nuremberg, as I said before. Certainly got on top of us here in the second half, and now Frolling from a long way out, tries to rip that one top right corner, thankfully just goes over the bar. It is still one all and off the back of that highlight. Might be time for us here to just up our tempo and see if we can create one more chance to hopefully pick up all three points. And very shortly off the back of going to an extremely high tempo, we do get a throw in here in our favour. Hopefully can finally do something in the second half so far. It's been a bit of a disappointment off the back of a good first one. Big chance here for Manganelli, but unfortunately, a bit of a long touch there. Tight angle hits the side netting, and we start in the last few minutes of this game locked up at one all. Would be a bit of a disappointing result, especially with the way that we did concede that equaliser early in the second half, but overall stats-wise, and what I've seen in the match engine, actually more encouraged by that result than what I was seeing before, including that first game of today's episode. But unfortunately, had our chances to win that game, soft goal we conceded early in that second half, as I said, and it is a one or draw, not a bad result, but probably does mean now we need to win a lot of our games in the run home if we are to make our way into the promotion hunt to try and get ourselves up into the Bundesliga for next season. But as you can see, in the end, we are still six points behind the likes of St. Pauli and Jan Regensburg off the back of a one-all draw at home 
against Nuremberg. So unfortunately we could only manage a draw in that second game of today's episode having gone back to the fluid counter-attacking style albeit I do feel like it looked a bit better in that most recent game so I think we'll try and stick with that for the rest of the season. It is what we've tried to work our transfer business around as well so it's probably a good idea to stick to that shape and to that style and hopefully we can play with it a little bit going to the start of next season hopefully have a more consistent campaign in our second season. In the two Bundesliga, also, of course, Panzerwinisto did pick up an injury late in that first half, very late in that first half. He will be gone for about three to four weeks, unfortunately, with a twisted ankle. So it does mean that Eric Vuthak will probably be starting in that right back role. And we do come back for tomorrow's episode and also have gone forward a few days off the back of those games. And as you can see, we have fallen down the table just a little bit, down in eighth place, albeit we are still only six points behind. Down Regensburg and St. Pauli. So if we can find some form in our next couple of games, we could still sneak our way potentially back into that promotion hunt. But at the very least, with only six games left in the season, we are 15 points clear of the relegation teams. We should be staying up in our first season in the two Bundesliga, which was the main aim we did have going in to this season. But I think that will do it for today's episode. Bit of a disappointing one again in terms of of our results but hopefully we are going to build up a bit of momentum now having gone back to the 4-2-3-1 fluid counter-attacking style if you did enjoy today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well i think we'll come back in not too long for the next episode because there's a few really big games coming up if we do want to keep ourselves in the hunt to try and get promoted, we'll take on Augsburg off camera, those guys. Fifth on the table, away from home. That is certainly not a given, but then we take on the two teams currently in those promotion spots. St. Pauli in that playoff spot in third, and also Jan Regensburg away from home. Those guys currently in second. If we can pick up points in those games, that could get us right back in the promotion hunt. We can see where we go from there for the rest of the season. In those last three games, if we need to come back for those, or we'll just show the last one before we do our end of season review. So it's going to be a big episode tomorrow to see if we can get ourselves back into serious contention to get promoted up to the Bundesliga or next season when we take on Jan Regensburg and St. Pauli. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Thought I could do this, left with the sadness, I own, I own Don't know how I ended up